Ten days had passed since we had left the coast of Brazil bound for Africa. We had reached a position of seven degrees, 22 minutes north latitude, when a violent hurricane pounced upon us. For 11 days, it hurled us about like some mad assassin playing cat and mouse with its victim. We had no other course but to surrender to our fate and hope for the best. On the 12th day out, our vessel ran aground. And since a salvage attempt would have been futile, we abandoned it before it could be swallowed up by the sea. 11 of us took to a lifeboat, but our efforts proved to be in vain. Shortly, we were engulfed by a gigantic wave and the boat was swamped. It would be useless to try to relate the thoughts that flashed through my mind as I sank beneath the surface. All I can remember is suddenly seeing a piece of broken mast floating near me. I grabbed it and hung on for dear life. Had it not been for the stroke of good luck, I would have perished. said in the Bible, God helps him who helps himself. And I realize that this is exactly what I must do. But how? I do not know where I am, whether I am on an island or some continent. I do not even know whether this region is inhabited. Although I would readily thrust this thought from my mind, I must face one stark fact. For the first time in my life, I am utterly and completely alone. And I am beginning to experience the overwhelming surge of anguish which comes with solitude. My situation is hardly one to be envied, and I have very little to rely upon in the way of aid. Only my knife. My two hands. My inseparable old pipe, which my father gave me eight years ago when I left home. And a handful of wet tobacco. Even a simpleton could see that with these meager resources, I have little, if any, hope of remaining alive.
I cannot surrender without first doing battle. I must find a way to make a fire. If I can do that, there is a good chance that it will be seen by some passing ship. The first undertaking was successful. I must not lose faith, even though I realize that my efforts may be useless, since this region is probably far from established shipping lanes. give up the hope of being rescued. I must cultivate the art of waiting. I must have. I will have patience. On the dawn of my first day as a castaway, I awoke with a ravenous hunger. As soon as I have found something to eat, I will spend the rest of the day exploring. Because there is a terrible fear gnawing at my heart. The fear that this land may be inhabited by cannibals. Thank you. 
As luck would have it, the region abounds in coconut palms. For the time being, these will quench my thirst, for I have as yet to find fresh water. As for food, the meat of this tropical fruit will suffice me until I am able to find something more adequate to satisfy my hunger. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
I finally decided that the best way to leave the jungle was to take to the river. So I improvised a raft by tying some logs together. I would feel safer once I reached the sea, and the task of obtaining food would be considerably easier. The friendly pounding of the waves did much to calm my fears, and I began to have more confidence in my chances for survival. I knew that with a little luck, I would be able to catch a couple of lobsters.
I decided to make myself a spear as a means of self-defense, as well as for hunting.
As I gazed at the wounded deer before ending its life, I suddenly remembered the many times that I had been on the verge of losing mine. This was no real solution to my problem. So I decided to set it free, just as I longed to be set free from this prison without walls. that it belonged to my ship. Hope was reborn when I thought of finding perhaps one of my companions, or at least some provisions. I must search everywhere. There is not a moment to lose.
This is my 14th day on the island, and I have made 12 trips to the wreck. A violent hurricane beset the island until the early hours of the morning. But I was hardly prepared for the sight that greeted my eyes when I left the place where I had taken refuge from the storm. My ship was gone. I suppose I should have expected what I saw, but under the circumstances I was hoping that some miracle would protect what was left of my precious cargo. Although I had lost no time in getting almost everything salvageable off her, I had still planned to make one more trip today to complete the task. However, I realized that I must consider myself fortunate in having retrieved the supplies that are now safely in my care. My prime preoccupation now is to find an adequate refuge from the numerous wild animals that roam the island. And savages, if they happen to exist. I decided to explore further and find a place that would be suitable to build some sort of structure for my own protection as well as for the storage of the treasures that I had been able to rescue from the ship. I had discovered that I was on an island with no other land in view and I had come to realize that my present camping place would not suffice my needs. It was on low ground, surrounded by swamps. This hilltop offered me a view of the entire island, and it would be an ideal place as far as defense was concerned. On the other hand, there would be no nearby supply of drinking water, and I would be too far from the sea. That last factor was of supreme importance to me, for I had not given up the hope that someday a ship would suddenly appear upon the horizon and carry me to freedom, deliver me from my captivity, from my terrible, gnawing solitude. Undoubtedly, this is the first time a shot had been heard on the island since the hand of God created it.
I had to resort to any means available to obtain sustenance so as not to exhaust the meager provisions I had managed to salvage. I decided to construct several kinds of traps and set them in and around the area I had finally selected as my home. I now know that a man can become a destructive force when he uses firearms. I conjured up several ideas for the type of abode that would best fit my needs. If I were to build a stockade around the site I had chosen as my permanent camp, it would offer some protection for the entrance to my cave, where all of my too few priceless possessions were stored. It was difficult to decide whether to dig a cave, erect some sort of structure, or perhaps make a combination of both. At last I found the ideal place. The first thing I had to do was to explore the cave.
Once my stockade was finished, I devoted my time to hunting to help increase my store of provisions. On numerous occasions, I used myself as bait. It was also a sure way of ridding myself of many of the beasts that inhabited the island, especially those who lived near my camp. spent so much energy in capturing it, I decided not to kill it. the beach on the far side of the island and was surprised to discover that hundreds of great sea turtles use the beach as a breeding ground. Thanks to them, I solved in great part my constant problem of food for the tiger. Last, we had enough food to prepare real banquets. I realized that if I really dedicated myself, I would eventually tame him. We would both lose our fear of each other in a very short time.
I continued going to the beach frequented by the turtles. I fed the great cat turtle meat for several weeks, hoping that little by little we would become friends. the time had come. Although I was afraid the cat might at any moment attack me, I decided to take it out of the trap. If I was going to really tame the animal, I had to start sooner or later. last I was sure that I would succeed and that in a short time the great cat and I would be inseparable companions. I was cast ashore on this beach on the 30th of September in the year of our Lord 1659. I had devised a crude calendar so as not to lose track of time. The short marks indicated the days of the weeks, and the longer ones, Sundays. I used two marks to identify the first days of each month. Today was of special significance. It marked my first anniversary on the island, and today also I had completed the work on my new home. After 365 days of scanning the horizon, I was suddenly overwhelmed by the sensation that I would never see another human being again. A chill ran through my body. I was destined to die alone, isolated from humanity. thought invaded my mind last night. What if I were to fall sick in this solitude? Had this fear itself been the cause of my present condition? I would never know. the hurricane that had plucked the wrecked ship from my grasp. Because among the things I was unable to rescue was a medicine chest.
squeals of a trapped goat had brought me from my cave. The catch had made it unnecessary for me to eat the rest of my small store of rice and cereal seeds rescued from the wreck. The few minutes it took me to prepare my feast seemed like hours, but the delicious meat would do much to restore my strength. Still, I cannot forget the awful specter of death, which my imagination has projected against the flames. My first attempt at planting had been unsuccessful a fact which I attributed to a lack of humidity in the soil. But now the ground was saturated from the recent rains, and I considered this the moment to risk planting the last of my seeds. It had been a long and hard day, and I was extremely tired but I felt a sense of satisfaction at having completed the task I had set for myself. I had had an eerie feeling all day. The sky was gray and not a sound could be heard in the heavy air that hung over the island. The surface of the sea was as smooth as a lake. Nothing happens that is not the will of God. He has willed that these things befall me. I have no one to talk to, no one to share the burden of this endless solitude. At least I did not drown with my companions. I am alive and the same power that delivered me from the jaws of death can deliver me from this loneliness. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me.
My main concern was to get back to the stockade, since I was sure it had been totally destroyed by the earthquake. When I saw how much damage had been done, I felt heartsick. I had lost my tiger, my only friend. For some time, I had been trying my hand at making eating utensils from clay. Despite the different methods I had devised, they had either cracked in the sun or had dissolved in the water. Finally, my efforts were rewarded, and I found the secret. During the first three years, I had learned to work clay, weave baskets, and finally make flour. This was my first adventure in baking. This bread would be my first reward after having discovered how to process the grain. My first attempt rendered me good, sturdy bricks instead of bread. For the first time, I admired the skill of the bakers I had often watched as a young boy. It occurred to me that every human being is destined for a certain mission in life. Through my study of the Bible and constant adherence to the Word of God, I formed a new outlook on life by the end of my fourth year. I looked upon the outside world as a remote dream from which I expected nothing. I could even quote the words of Abraham. 
Between thee and me there is a great gulf fixed. I was separated from the evilness of my fellow man. I was not affected by greed, lust, nor pride, for since my needs were simple, I lacked nothing. Undoubtedly, my strange attire would have provoked laughter and ridicule had I been seen walking the streets of London. But to me, after my musket, it was my most important asset. share of danger, I could not contain my curiosity, so I set out to circle the island on foot. I had walked a considerable distance when my eyes fell on something that stopped me dead in my tracks, as though I had been hit by a bolt of lightning. to make sure that it had not been my imagination. But no, there they were. Human footprints clearly pressed into the sand. could summon. My imagination told me that there was a man waiting in ambush behind every tree. Panic took complete possession of me. I was sure that I was being followed by a horde of enemies. I knew how a rabbit must feel when being chased by a pack of dogs. At 
last, I was up against the most ferocious of all beasts, man himself. I would not go down without giving a good accounting of myself. Thank God I had built the stockade which could not be overrun easily. I could fire a salvo from all of my weapons in less than three minutes. I did not close my eyes that night, and as time wore on, my fear increased. I became dominated by terror. The years of isolation had taken their toll, and my imagination betrayed me. At one time, I was sure the devil himself was out there waiting. The suspense was agonizing. I wanted to see my enemy. How was it possible for another human to have reached the island? Where was the craft that had brought him? I wondered if there were other prints and could not explain how a ship could have approached the island without my having seen it. Surely the intruder could be no more dangerous than the devil himself. It was probably some savage whose canoe had been carried along by the ocean currents. I felt fortunate in not having been caught close to the point where he disembarked. Or they, because there could be several. That was another hair-raising thought. If they discover that the island is inhabited, they will surely try to steal my meager possessions or even kill me. Sound was coming from the area where I had set my traps. If my enemy had been caught, I would merely have to move in and finish him off. I gathered up my courage and left the stockade. is a strange pawn of providence. How readily he adapts his behavior to the circumstances surrounding him. Today we love what we will detest tomorrow. Today we covet that which we will reject tomorrow. Today we yearn for that which we will fear in the future. I was a living example of such behavior. Although my isolation from humanity was the embodiment of my problem, the thought of coming in contact with another human being filled me with fear. I was ready to retreat the moment I laid eyes on the stranger who had set foot on my island.
I began to believe that the footprints were my own. theory had been thoroughly dissolved. I now had to face the fact that although my island was uninhabited, it was being visited by people from somewhere else or people who had been forced ashore by strong winds and currents. I had not seen another human being for 15 years, but this was not proof that no one ever set foot on the island. The strangers most probably came and left the island from time to time. I concluded that my only real danger was that of being seen. So I did everything I could think of to avoid being discovered. Never had I known such dark terror. Reality had reached and surpassed the wildest tricks of my imagination. Somehow I had never allowed myself to believe that human beings were capable of such brutal depravity. I was somewhat relieved when I realized that the cannibals never came to the island in search of victims. They always brought them with them. Undoubtedly, some of the savages had come exploring without finding anything of interest. For many days and nights, I thought of nothing except how to eliminate some of the bloodthirsty monsters and rescue the victims they brought to the island. I had to attack them while they were disembarking on the island, but what good was one man against 20 or 30 savages who were as adept with their bows and arrows as I with my firearms? One of my ideas was to bury five or six pounds of gunpowder just below the spot where they built their fire. But I only had one keg of gunpowder, and I could not be sure that the charge would go off when and how I planned it so as to kill several and scare the others to such an extent that they would never return. I disregarded the scheme and decided to set up an effective ambush in a place where I could rapidly fire all of my muskets. From my vantage point, I could watch their every move, but despite the strength of my spyglass, I was unable to make out if they were men or women. moment on earth. I could have killed two, but not eight. With a little luck, the rest would have fled, but they would probably have returned with reinforcements. It was now evident that the cannibals were not frequent visitors to my island. I had waited a long time to do battle with them, and now I had let them escape. But when I recalled the remains of those bloody orgies, the bones and half-devoured bodies, I became so incensed I made up my mind to wipe out the next group, regardless of its size. My stockade was the only place where I felt safe. I had everything organized in such a manner that I had all I needed within the enclosure. Nevertheless, I did not abandon the idea of finding a way to escape from the island.
I could only get my hands on one of the savage's canoes, it would at least be a start. But what would become of me when I arrived to their shores? It would be pure folly to leave my island only to end up in their stomachs. But no matter how great my fear, my mind kept pushing to the fore the natural urge to return to civilization. With this firm resolution, I kept a constant vigil on the southwest coast. I was rewarded one morning when I discovered five canoes on the beach on my side of the island. I was surprised to see the prisoner break away and run for his life. I prayed to God that he would be able to maintain his speed until he was able to reach safety. But my blood ran cold when he veered from his original course and started to run directly toward me. Suddenly I realized that he was trying to tell me we should eat the two corpses. No! Friday. You are Friday because you arrived on Friday. 
Friday. Friday. Friday. Master. 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 Friday. Master. Friday. Friday. Master. Friday. Master. <laughs> My little boy. struggle to stay alive on a desert island, the constant battle against the elements, the lack of the companionship of his fellow man for many years, far from the conveniences of society, without hope of rescue, he remained undaunted. It is an example of what man can do without violence and without wars. The desire to live and create are all man really needs to come out ahead regardless of his situation. I was happy in the knowledge that I had learned to value the friendship of a fellow human being, and that I had at last found a companion to share my joys and sorrows. Many years later, after their rescue, they returned to settle on their island, the one they had named Island of Despair. <laughs> 